Hey everyone, I am at Walmart parking lot on a cold Monday morning, very, very cold. And I'm getting ready to go for my walk and uh, something that I enjoy doing and need to do at my age. But I wanted to just take a moment this morning sitting here in my car to talk to you about a very dangerous enemy that we as Christians face. And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, people, or I'm not talking about nations that are at war. I'm talking about our own emotions. Our own emotions can be a very dangerous enemy to us if we do not have control, if we do not have authority over it, if we allow our emotions to run rampant, causing us to do whatever we feel like doing, right? Whatever we feel like doing. How many times have we caught ourselves saying that, well, I just feel like, you know, I, I don't feel like that. I feel like this. And, and, and that whole, and, and of course we have feelings, you know, we're not negating the fact that God made us with feelings. Jesus had feelings. He wept, you know, he rejoiced. So we have feelings. We're not talking about walking around like robots without feelings. We're talking about us having those feelings under control because quite often, Feelings can be erratic because they are based upon, uh, you know, uh, our emotions. They're based upon our circumstances. They're based upon how we feel at any particular time. That's just the way it is. We're all the same way. But today I am seeing such a epidemic of Christians that are making decisions based upon their feelings. And feelings can deceive you. Feelings can fool you. Feelings can distract you. They can do all of those things. You know, one of my favorite verses in the Psalms is Psalm 127, uh, pardon me, Psalm 27, uh, verse 13, when David made a comment, and I'm sure that David was basing this truth upon his own feelings at the time as well. Because as you know, David, you know, was running for his life for many years. Uh, you know, he, 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 he didn't know, you know, who was with him and who was against him. He didn't know what the next day was going to hold. He had all of these facts in his life that could have very easily persuaded him to lean on his feelings instead of on the truth of God's word, God's promises. That is where the danger is. That is where the danger is. When we begin to believe our feelings over the truth of God's word. And you can't do that. No matter what you're going through right now. No matter what your emotions are screaming at you right now, you, can't, you cannot allow, if you're going to be a victorious, overcoming, effective, powerful Christian, used for God in a powerful way, if you're going to allow your feelings to dictate to you your decisions, then you are not going to grow, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to stay stagnant, you're going to stay powerless, and you're going to stay ineffective. But if you allow, but if you will allow faith and your trust and your belief in God's truth to dictate your choices that you make, then you're gonna you're gonna grow in leaps and bounds. God is gonna send you forth. God is gonna promote you. God is going to bring you uh, abundance of blessing and favor in the kingdom of God. If you are if you keep your feelings under control, subject subject to what is true not subject to what you happen to be feeling emotionally at the time. And that's what David was going through quite often. But he, David knew, he loved God. He knew what God's truth and promises were to him. And at one point, David said this, I would have fainted in Psalm 27 verse 13. I would have fainted, listen, I would have fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of God come to pass in the land of the living. There's so much in that one verse. That verse is packed with everything from emotion to truth to God's promises and all that David was dealing with at that time. A crazy king, uh, you know, seeking his life to destroy him, to kill him. You know, his own people betraying him and on and on and on. David faced all of those things. And we, you and I are facing our own dilemmas, our own you know, situations, and that the greatest enemy right now that is trying to destroy us is our emotions that have to be under check. We have to keep them under check. 
if we're going to go forward in the will of God, if we're going to come into our destiny like David did, because David eventually and ultimately sat on the throne of Israel, hallelujah, even as God had promised him at a young age, he was around 17 years old, and he sat on the throne at the age of 30, and he endured, he endured all of those years of trial, 13 years of trial, 13 years of emotional ups and downs, not knowing what each day is going to hold, not knowing whether he was going to survive or he was going to thrive, but he did not allow his emotions to control him. And today I am seeing such a number of Christians that are allowing their emotions to keep them in bed in the mornings instead of coming to church on a Sunday morning, keep them away from fellowship, keep them away from sitting down and reading the Word of God and spending time in the, in the Lord's presence because of their emotions. Because, well, they just don't feel it. The, the devil is playing with our emotions. The devil is our greatest enemy and he uses our emotions as a tool against us if we allow him to. It's our choice. We have control over our emotions. God made us with emotions. But our emotions are a good thing if they are under our control and never mastering the truth of God's Word. And so that's what it, the bottom line is. That's what it comes down to. Are we going to believe God's Word, which is true and forever settled in heaven, or are we going to believe our emotions and our feelings and what people are saying and what our circumstances are trying to uh, you know, cause us to believe? We've got to do away with all of that. And we've got to say, you know, if God is for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Amen. Every stronghold of the enemy I pull down in the mighty name of Jesus. With the authority, God's given me the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. To loosen the bind. Those are truths that will overpower your emotions that would try to control you. Let truth control you. Let truth renew your mind today. And begin to bring your emotions into subjectivity. Hallelujah. Keep them under your control. Don't allow them to control you. The Bible is very clear on that. The Bible talks about people that do not have control. It's, it's a very dangerous thing. They begin their, their thoughts go wild and rampant. They begin thinking all kinds of wrong things because of opinions, because of you know what they see instead of walking by faith. Walking by faith requires walking in the truth of God's Word, whether you see it or not, whether you feel it or not, even whether you believe it or not. It doesn't change the truth of God's Word. We need to be, we need to be walking in truth and not in our feelings. And it concerns me and it bothers me and it disturbs me of what I am seeing today, especially as a pastor, that people are living their life, they're making their choices flippantly, on feelings and it will never go well for them it will never go well for them they may be so convinced by the enemy that this is the way but the Bible's clear it says I think in Proverbs chapter 14 and 16 twice it says that there is a way that seems right unto a man but the end thereof is the way of death it leads to death that's what happens when you allow your emotions to lead you instead of allowing God's Word to lead and direct your path glory to God and God said, I will have my eye upon you. God said, I will teach you and I will instruct you in the way that you were to go. And how does he do that? Through the Word and through the Holy Spirit. Not through our wild emotions that are out of control. So that's my warning to you this morning. So just, you know, get your emotions under control. Ask the Holy Spirit to bring you that power and that determination, that discipline and that, influ that uh, influence in your own life. To, to keep those emotions in check. It doesn't mean to become hard and cold and you refuse to allow any emotions to show. No, I'm not talking about that at all. We have emotions. I weep. I cry. I get emotional when I think about the Lord. I get emotional when I think about the sin that is ravaging our world today. I get emotional when I see the headlines about wars and rumors of wars and all the people that are not ready for that. There are emotions that Jesus expressed very publicly. And so we're not talking about suppressing your emotions. We're talking about controlling your emotions in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray for the viewers here today. 
God, would you give them the strength? Would you give them, Lord, that intentional spirit and attitude to keep their emotions under control, God? And Father, to not allow, God, their circumstances or the opinions of people or even the words of people or even the feelings that they have in their own spirit, God, in their own flesh. Don't allow, I pray, God, that they will not allow those things, Lord, to dictate to them how they are to live or what they're to do or what they're to believe. God, may the Word of God be the foundation of their life today. God, that they will stand firm upon the Word, that they will believe the Word of God, hallelujah, and that they will serve the Lord with all that is within them. And God, like David, we pray, Lord, I would have given up, but I believe to see the goodness of God come to pass in the land of the living, in my life, here and now. I'm believing it, Lord. I'm declaring it, God. I'm, I'm speaking it, God. It doesn't matter how I feel, Lord. I'm going to declare it because it is the truth, and the truth always prevails over all the lies of hell and over the, uh, Father, the false emotions of my own flesh. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you, and thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.